Welcome everybody. Thanks for watching. I just want to give a, a um, special shout out to the Thule Lake FFA agronomy team. We're really behind you here in Woodland and we hope you do well. Do us proud because I know you will. Anyway, today we're going to be taking a look at um, some soil monoliths to give you kind of an indication of what can, you can tell from a soil from looking at these kind of monoliths. So I'm going to try to explain to, the, to my best ability looking at color, uh, mineral, structure, those kind of things, and uh, let's get started. And our first question I, I want to, to go over with you is what is the natural drainage of monolith number one? Let's first of all take a quick a look at it. If you look at monolith number one, you'll notice that it's kind of um, loosely packed, uh, not very blocky, but it's kind of a fine, and there is a little bit of a uh, fracture, but for the most part, it's pretty consistent. But the one thing you'll notice about it is in this A horizon, it's uh, pretty dark, either dark brown or black, and that tells us the kind of mineral that's in this soil and how it might behave. And then when we kind of move into our it looks like B a layer, and then right down here is a C layer. It's not very, um, it doesn't have a lot of aggregate. It's not compacted. So if we look at that from that component, it probably drains fairly well. All this black stuff, that doesn't mean organic material, because if you look at the top, you don't have any organic matter. You don't have things like grasses or, or leaves or, uh, roots. So this isn't really organic matter. This is a uh, black or dark brown really indicate iron sulfide or it could be uh, iron oxyhydride. So either one of those are probably it's going to be some kind of iron in here. So let's take a look at the questions that we have. First and foremost, uh, what kind of drainage, as we said, because of the consistency of the soil throughout the profile, I would say that it would be drained fairly well. The second thing about monolith number, monolith number one, brown or black, is indicated um, primarily an iron is that mineral. So those are the first two questions. So again, look at structure. It's the structure number one is pretty consistent throughout it. Nothing massive, nothing, nothing dense, nothing that really is going to restrict the the the, um, the movement of water. That's why I say it's drained well. And then of course the dark brown and black typically means there's iron in that um, profile. Now we're going to look at monolith number two again. So let's take a quick look at monolith no number two. This one's a little bit different. You can see it is also uh, a dark brown, possibly um, maybe a black, but probably a dark brown. You can see though in this uh, one here, you can see it's a little bit more compacted up in the A layer and then it starts to change structure right about here. So we're looking at probably the B layer right around here and dropping down. And look, it's blocky, it's thick, it's dense. And then we get to um, our parent material, which looks like some um, some loosely arranged aggregate. We have three fully de de developed layers uh, in our uh, profile. So in the horizon here, we have an A layer, a B layer, and a C layer. And the B layer looks like it's pretty thick, heavy clay, and then we, it gives away to some rock. And of course, it's compacted near the top. The first thing that it tells me, because there's compaction uh, near the very top of the A layer right here, you'll notice you're not going to get a lot of travel from the, the root system. So I doubt it's going to be trees. And then, of course, once it gets past that, it even gets a little it gets a little even tougher going through this soil. So this uh, particular profile le leads me to believe that this is going to be uh, poorly drained. Uh, in, in, as far as uh, uh, this profile is concerned. And the other thing is the kind of plants that are going to be growing there are things with shallow roots. Trees don't have shallow roots. And so because this doesn't have a whole lot of sand in it, I, I'm thinking, and it has a lot of clay in it, probably going to be prairie grasses. Short um, in stature, and the, the root system isn't very extensive, so it's it's apparently a fibrous root system that doesn't extend very uh, far into the soil. So that's how I would evaluate monolith number two. Okay, let's take a look at number three. Monolith number three, and I'm going to, again, zoom in on it. Really shallow A layer. Again, probably some kind of iron in this. Notice it's 
uh, relatively, uh, it's a lot looser. This is much more compact, much more dense. So this one's not as as compact, so it's a looser soil. Doesn't have a lot of uh, obstruction. It looks like the B layer starts somewhere around there. You can see the change in its structure. A little bit more massive, but again, not terribly uh, impenetrable. And then we get down here, and then we have a, a very deep a C layer. So we have some structure there that's that's not terribly massive. It's not uh, condensed or, or a very dense, I should say. And that leads me to believe that uh, probably roots can be established fairly uh, uh, far into this soil profile. And I would say in this case, because there isn't a lot of restrictions within the profile, probably we're talking about vegetation of trees will uh, work well in this monolith number three. The other thing is if you notice, and this picture isn't terribly good. I'm going to turn on the magnifying lens again. You'll see some kind of orange right in here. And you'll find some orange kind of right in here, maybe some red as well. What that tells me is a mineral that's in there is, is of um, a ferrous oxide, basically kind of rust. So it has um, some kind of iron filings in it. And so when the question is asked, what's the orange color in it, that means there's iron. So that's how I would evaluate um, monolith number three. All right, now we're going to start with monolith number four. Let's take a, let, let's zoom in on number four. Uh, and then if you look at number four, it's fairly consistent. Looks like there's the A layer ending there. And then throughout the, I think this is the C layer. Yeah, this would be a C layer. Uh, th there's nothing really that much. There's no, there's no uh, dense uh, aggregate. There seems to be no breaks. It seems to be very consistent, but not very tightly packed. It looks like sand, probably medium to, to fine grain sand. And um, there's no mixing of any of the soil in here. So it leads me to believe that a lot of, there could be uh, a lot of wind action to smooth it off the top and keep it clean. So I'm guessing it's going to be a dune area. But the other thing that's very unique about it, you have this really, really big C layer, and then it gives away to the A layer, which tells me it's extremely young soil. So let's take a look at what our questions are. Number one is it says, what's the age? Definitely a young soil because we're talking about an A layer and then the parent material C layer. So that would be um, my guess there. So um, on the, the second question, it says, what where the landscape you likely find it? Probably in some kind of desert region. And so that would be, of course, a dune. So that has to do, that pretty much summarizes what a monolith number four is. All right, let's end lies monolith number five. It's a little bit different than, the, than, well, actually they're all different, but this one looks like kind of a shorter stack. Um, but uh, let's zoom in on it. Thing that first uh, I noticed is very defined A, B, and C layer. Here's the A layer. Um, it is kind of uh, blocky, but it's unconsolidated. Um, so it's it's not really consistent. Looks like it's been broken up. Same with the this B layer. Uh, not a very thick one, but again, it's broken up and it has some um, uh, fractures in it, kind of loosely arranged. And then we get to the bedrock. It's really fractured. So in, in, in this case, I would say if water was to run through it, it would it would drain extremely well because of the, the breaks, the fractures, um, and, and how loosely it's packed. And then the other thing I, I, I think you could say is probably the, the bedrock in particular is so loosely uh, consolidated, there may be some weathering going on in it as well. All right, now to analyze what we just talked about, uh, monolith number five. First and foremost, it's going to be drained well, primarily because of the fractures that are in the rock. It's loosely consolidated. And then when we get to the parent material, I would definitely refer to it as weathered, as you can see in the fractures and the breaks. So, Tule Lake, that's the first part of the practicum um, that we've been uh, studying with uh, uh, Mr. Mr. Brown. Thanks for sending this to me. I'll try to get the part two um, to you very, very soon. But I hope that you enjoyed it. Again, Tule Lake. Good luck, and uh, just continue to do what you do and to study hard and prepare. See you later. Thanks.